Oh, thank you, Federico. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for coming. I want to encourage you to have videos because I can actually see you. Uh, even though I cannot see everybody's name, if I can see your video, that would be nice. Uh, uh, so the way it's going to work is uh, I, uh, I'm going to try to make uh, the talk a little friendly. So if you uh, do understand what I'm asking you, if you want to say yes, do this. And uh, if you want to interrupt me or you don't understand, do that. And if you're not on video, uh, do some emo uh, emoji which you can find in the reaction, I'm sure. Everyone, uh, everyone clear with the instructions? Oh yeah, so those who are not on video, I can see you're not, uh, you don't know where remote is are. Uh, all right, so this, this talk is one of those, uh, uh, based on one of those papers which were born during pandemic. And uh, there is a reason. It took us uh, maybe four years, almost five years to get this done. But once the pandemic started, uh, uh, research was uh, basically the only thing that took mind off and that's what we did. So uh, the talk is gonna be uh, about uh, polytops uh, uh, in, uh, in a more general sense. We're gonna talk about polyhedra and, uh, the, uh, and what about with uh, faces which are equilateral triangles, except, uh, except for one possible face. So let's uh, so let me uh, let me do the definitions first, and then I'll do a lot of examples. Um, so I'm going to say that PL curve is integral if uh, if if it's comprised of unit length intervals. Uh, everyone clear what I mean by that? Excellent. So a dome is a two-dimensional polyhedral surface uh, 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 which is comprised of equilateral triangle. That's what the dome is, uh, and. Um, I'm going to say that the integral uh, curve can be done if there is a dome uh, whose boundary is that uh, integral curve. Everyone clear what I mean by that? Okay, good. So here are a bunch of examples uh, of, uh, of domes. So here is a dome over a square. Here is a dome over a pentagon. Those are also very familiar uh, a polyhedra. This is, a, uh, this is just a regular pyramids. Uh, on the right, there is a little more complicated. Here is a curve over, uh, here is a dome over a regular tangon. Okay. Now, is, does that look like a dome? No, 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 no. Okay, because it's, it's not a dome. Drawing a dome would be difficult. So basically the way to obtain a dome is to attach uh, attach square or pentagonal pyramid to each uh, to each square of a pentagonal face. Okay, that would make it into a dome. Is this clear? And the same thing over there. So basically, this is how you create domes over a regular ten gone and a regular twelve gone. And the problem that Rick Kenyon posed uh, a while ago is: Can every closed integral curve uh, be domed? Is the problem clear? Yeah, but you mentioned about uh, surfaces. So in other cases where you can dome with a more complicated surface and just a ball, and you cannot do it with a ball? Uh, let, we'll, we'll get to that. The, uh, that uh, so essentially right now, I'm not thinking of uh, anything uh, interesting when I mean, what I mean by PL surface is it can be immersed into R3. It can be self-intersecting, can have any, any topology whatsoever. The only requirement I want is uh, uh, every, every face has to be a regular trend. But Igor, I got, I got confused about the squares. Those squares are not triangles. That's correct. Let me repeat. To each square, you attach, your, uh, you, you attach, uh, you attach the dome on the left. Oh, OK. Gotcha. Thank you. Of course. Everyone on the same page now? Just one more question, uh, Igor. Your, your curves don't live in a two-dimensional plane necessarily, right? Or do they? Correct. OK. Yeah, the curves are in R3, and uh, the domes are in R3. Everything is in R3. If you wanted to do it in higher dimension, if you wanted to make a dome in higher dimension, that's easy. 
okay? The issue is R3. And, uh, uh, and for a long time, uh, when we looked at this problem, we weren't sure whether it's gonna, whether the answer is gonna be positive or negative. I asked Rick Kenyon, and he was sort of inclined to think that the answer is gonna be positive. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the answer in a minute. Let me just keep the, uh, the grand mystery alive for a minute. Uh, and let me show you why they're called domes. They're called domes because uh, uh, people who travel a lot have seen a lot of domes. Uh, uh, this is a picture uh, in, a, uh, in Paris. This is a picture somewhere on the roof. Uh, and uh, there are more domes over there. The domes on the right is a dome that was never built. Uh, so Buckminster Fuller wanted to build a dome over the whole Manhattan, just covering the whole thing. And uh, uh, there was somebody wise in the New York City Hall who decided that this is not a good idea. But it was an interesting idea, I must say. It's an interesting idea. He thought that this would save a lot of energy, which it uh, might have. So, um, so one question. So, if you think you understand these domes uh, in the middle, uh, in the middle, of the, third, the second and third picture, I don't think you do. So, here is a question: Is uh, uh, is this an actual over regular uh, twenty gone or whatever it is? Yeah. Can can you actually make a dome like that? who's uh, uh, a dome over regular 20 gone, which is going to look like that. Do you think yes or no? Uh, pe uh, see, people don't want to go on record to say that, uh, uh, to give opinion. So in fact, there is no, uh, there is no dome like that uh, of, of, of this, uh, with this with uh, this combinatorics over 20 gone. That's because we actually know uh, we actually know classification of all Johnson uh, uh, bodies, and uh, this is not one of them. And uh, so, uh, so another question is: Can you make this to be a planar uh, planar uh, polygon? Can you make this a, a planar twenty gone or whatever? And that's a much more interesting question. Um, so, so let me tell you the positive results first. This is uh, all we can do. Essentially, so let me start with theorem two. Theorem two says that, yes, I, uh, I can actually make a, a, a dome uh, over all regular polygons, okay? So if you have a regular polygon, there exists some kind of dome. It's gonna be terribly complicated. It's not gonna look anything like what you've seen in the previous picture. It's gonna be uh, self-intersecting a lot, but there is a dome like that. So there is a, uh, so in, in a sense, what I'm saying is there exists a polyhedron, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, whose faces are regular triangles and one regular angle. And the first theorem says basically, uh, Kenyan uh, conjecture uh, is uh, sort of generically true in a sense that for every curve, there is a curve very close to that curve, which can actually be domed. Okay. And uh, as you can see from open, we don't know if even if all planar unit rhombi can be domed. And uh, we don't know if all uh, in, uh, side, integral triangles, so triangles with inter, integer sides can be done. So that's something that we don't know. Is everyone clear what's going on? Can I move on? Any questions so far? Yeah, I can see some. Uh... Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's continue then. Um, so let me uh, let me uh, mention a little bit of uh, prior work. Uh, so prior work uh, uh, goes over centuries, millennia. Uh, in, in fact, in some sense, it was started by uh, Plato and Archimedes. But more recently, uh, there has been a lot of effort to try to classify polyhedra with regular faces. And uh, uh, there's been quite a bit of success for uh, polyhedra with square faces and pentagonal uh, faces. You, uh, you, you can see uh, a picture of a sort of uh, a torus made out of dodecahedra 
uh, and uh, there is a, a paper by Alevi uh, which uh, which discusses these examples and basically says that you uh, the surfaces uh, which uh, uh, whose all faces are uh, pentagonal are, are, are extremely rich there are very few of them and they all look like they're comprised of the decahedra. On the other hand, there are lots of stellated uh, polyhedra of various kinds. Uh, this goes back to Kepler and beyond. Uh, and in fact, there are lots of classifications of this stuff. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about the history uh, uh, of this kind. Uh, so let me tell you, uh, uh, everyone OK with the history? I didn't really say much. OK. So let me also uh, uh, show uh, examples uh, of problems where you already can see an issue. The issue is rather delicate here. So this is called the uh, uh, Stenhouse problem, and uh, it's from the uh, so-called Scottish book from 1957. And uh, what he's asking is there exists a, a, a closed tetrahedral chain. So you can see a closed tetrahedral chain here. So the question is, does there exist a closed tetrahedral chain? Is this a real picture? Yeah? No. So if you're very, very good, or you can enlarge your picture uh, somehow, you can see that this, is this picture is fake. Uh, there, is a, there is a tiny gap between, uh, between two tetrahedra somewhere in the middle. The gap is 0 0.0005 centimeters. Or uh, if you like uh, in nanometers, that's 5,000 nanometers. Obviously, that's a lot. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is uh, that's a fake example, but maybe there is a real example. That already shows you that, there are, uh, uh, that this, not, this is not an easy problem. It's actually kind of difficult to understand that. And uh, the truth is uh, no, this, this was solved very quickly by Shvetchkovsky. And uh, uh, much later, uh, it was shown that you can, uh, so if you start uh, with one triangle, the question is, you, you, you have your tetrahedral chain. Where can this tetrahedral uh, chain end? What is the space of uh, triangles that you can obtain at the end of the tetrahedral chain? And turns out uh, the tetrahedral chain can self-intersect if you want. Uh, and turns out that, uh, that's basically a dense. Uh, uh, so this is a little bit similar to our theorem one. The, uh, the, the space of all this tetra uh, tetrahedra is, uh, uh, at least orientation wise, is going to be uh, dense in the orthogonal group. And the proof is to look at the gr um, a group uh, 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 which is going to be isomorphic to uh, if, uh, if free product of bunch of zetos, which, uh, uh, which is obtained by reflection across faces of tetrahedra. And then uh, it's sort of dyna uh, dynamical system uh, theory. You show that this, is, uh, that th this group is dense in the orthogonal group. So that's, that's the status of this problem. It's not actually known uh, if the space of all triangles is uh, dense in the whole space. Everyone clear about this? Can I move on? Okay. Um, so now I want to mention uh, a few things which are kind of concerning. The first thing I want to mention is that once you have one, uh, um, there is one isosceles triangle two to one, which we don't know if it can be done. And in fact, we conjecture it cannot. The reason we conjecture it, uh, and we have a weak evidence for that, the weak evidence is the following. If conjecture is false, then every triangle, every integer, uh, this, this, there should be no isosceles here. Every integer triangle can be done. So here is, uh, here is an example how to do this. Uh, uh, so let, so let, we, we, we take this uh, kind of curve comprised of five equilateral triangles. Add, add a big two, uh, 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 equilateral triangle two by two, uh, add my triangle two, uh, with size two to one. And then if you put uh, sort of green pre, uh, prism on the uh, horizontally to a uh, two red triangle on the sides, kind of drop the blue equilateral triangle from the back, 
then what you uh, what you get is uh, this triangle with size two to three. That's a general idea of what you do. Now let me parse this for you. So this is a dome by itself. This is a dome by itself. Suppose there is a dome over two to one. So there is uh, there are some giant domes growing on the left and on the right here. Then it means that there is a dome which is growing over triangle two to three. And you can continue with this type of idea to obtain every uh, every uh, integ integral triangle. So you can get a dome over every internal triangle, and we believe that's a little too strong. Okay. So there is another reason why we believe that's true, and another reason we don't believe uh, 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 we don't believe there are rigid uh, there are uh, flexible domes which are uh, closed closed domes which are flexible so these are polyhedral surfaces comprised of uh, regular triangles and you have to you have to make some non-degeneracy non assumptions which I'm uh, which I will not state but the point is if you can't get all uh, all triangles uh, uh, in all integral triangles then you can basically build uh, build a dome uh, on, uh, on, on different uh, integral triangles, which is going to look like a Brickard octahedra, which is flexible. And we don't believe that's possible. So that's still an open problem. And uh, everyone good with this? Uh, so about conjecture one, is it about this specific isosceles triangle or about all yeah. isosceles? This is just the smallest one which we, which we cannot do and we don't believe we can, uh, one can. So, but do you have some sort of classification of what, or some sort of families which you can do easily? And this was the simplest one that you couldn't do, or? Well, we can do two, one, one. Okay. <laughs> Good. Several simple ones. Okay. So, but this essentially we're saying that this is the smallest one we cannot do. And if, if you can do that, you can do all triangles. Is everyone good? Any questions so far? Okay, so I wanna, uh, let, 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 me, uh, let me skip that. Uh, so what I, wanna, uh, what I wanna do is uh, talk about uh, positive results and how can one build, build domes at all. It's actually it's actually pretty difficult, and uh, one key, uh, uh, there's a key lemma that uh, uh, we call rhombus lemma, which is basically saying that uh, for almost all uh, for almost all uh, almost all rhombi for every a uh, that's not algebraic, almost all rhombi can be uh, uh, can be built. Now this are this rom uh, Now let's let me try to explain what I mean by that. So I'm going to consider rom by which uh, whose uh, 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 edge lengths are one 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 one. So these are quadrilaterals with equal uh, equal edges, uh, which are all one. And since they sit in space, they're parameterized uh, by two diagonals, a and b. Okay. I'm saying that for every non-algebraic a the set of B which you can build is actually quite large. So, uh, so here is a simple idea of how to do it. Uh, and uh, on the right is an actual, uh, actual way to do it. The simple idea is to start with two triangles uh, whose uh, uh, equilateral triangles, whose vertices are apart by, uh, by a distance A. And then you start, you, you attach another copy of those, another copy of those, and you start rotating them. So these two triangles by itself form, form a rhombus whose, uh, uh, whose one diagonal is one and another diagonal is A. When you, when, when you start attaching many, many, many of these pairs of triangles, uh, this uh, distance one uh, can become much more complicated and essentially this is gonna rotate around the circle. So for, so for example, if A is non-algebraic, you can make your rhombus to be as, uh, as uh, not completely flat, but almost flat, as flat as you like. 
Do you see what I mean? And uh, uh, so there, there are some geometric constraints in this construction. So the actual construction consists of uh, 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 you, you, be, you build such a rhombus uh, with uh, uh, one diagonal A uh, by, by attaching instead of one, just uh, three triangles on the top and three on the bottom. You sort of make this kind of bag uh, uh, from French fries or whatever. And then you start attaching them uh, around the circle in the same way as before. And when, uh, and when you do that, you can ag again obtain almost all diagonals. Okay, so that's, that's a key lemma that we need. Everyone clear with this? Yeah, I, I don't see any thumbs up, so I'm just gonna assume not. Somebody, somebody push a button and ask a question. No? Okay, you're lost. Uh, I'm just gonna move on. Okay. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. Oh, okay, Federico. So you have a specific piece for that, in which you can prove that it cannot be done. No, I cannot prove uh, cannot be done. Well, we'll wait. W wait with that. It will. Uh, I'll answer your question in about five minutes. Oh. Maybe seven. Okay. So here is now, now I'm gonna uh, tell you how to construct, uh, um, oh, um, Vic, uh, uh, this picture is a question for you. Uh, so, here, uh, uh, so here is gonna be my construction of a dome over regular, uh, over regular polygons. What I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll take my giant, re um, my giant regular polygon and I'll start attaching blue, tr uh, bl bl blue triangles on the side and I'm gonna tilt them up a little bit. Then I'm gonna attach uh, rhombi, which are gonna be almost flat uh, bet between the triangles. Then I'm gonna attach rhombi, which are almost flat between the triangles. And I'm gonna continue uh, tilting it up, up, up. And eventually, uh, and eventually it, um, my final rhombus uh, is gonna land on uh, the symmetry axis, on, on, on the line orthogonal uh, to the center uh, of the polygon. Okay, now why can I do that? The reason I can do that is because I still have one degree of freedom in the beginning when I tilt uh, my blue triangles up. So my construction, I can slowly uh, keep tilting up. And when I do that, eventually uh, uh, I can make sure that uh, you know, all my rhombi, they're not exactly flat, but eventually they will land on the, on the symmetry axis. Um, now this uh, this is somewhat influenced uh, by the picture on the right. Let's hear Vic answer. What is this picture on the right? Do you know? So it's a church in Minneapolis. I should have asked Sam. I'm sure Sam would know. It's 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 very well known. My first guess was the MIT chapel, but that was not correct. No, 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 no. It's a. Uh... It's a black uh, uh, church uh, somewhere. Uh, I, I know where it is. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very well-known building, but apparently Vic spent uh, a lot of time in Minneapolis without ever actually seeing it. Uh, there, is a, uh, uh, there is something in the chat which I cannot see. Oh, and I cannot read either. I think that was a mistake. Okay, so... Um, so now what do I do? I, uh, how, uh, so I'm gonna assume that my integral uh, uh, curve that I have, so I'm not, now that I proved, so, oh, by the way, so I'm, this is a proof of theorem two, and now I'm starting with the proof of theorem one. So I'm gonna fix a generic curve, and, uh, and I'm gonna assume that all, uh, it's gene by generic, I mean that all small diagonals are uh, non-algebraic. So diagonals between i and i plus two. There is a reason for that, which uh, I, uh, I'm not gonna be able to explain, but uh, I cannot require all diagonals to be non-algebraic, but I can require these diagonals to be non-algebraic. Uh, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply, uh, uh, I'm gonna apply flips, which are gonna be uh, near, nearly planar. So as far as you're concerned, let's just think of that as a planar curve. 
and apply uh, planar flips. And by that, I mean, sort of take two, uh, think of that in the following way. We take two adjacent edges and replace, uh, replace them with these edges going in the, uh, in the other direction. If, if you're familiar with the reduced decomposition of the symmetric group, that's a, that's a standard commutation relation. Uh, but uh, if you're not, that's just attaching, uh, attaching uh, a rhombus, uh, which is going to be nearly planar to, uh, uh, to two. And, and, what we, uh, and uh, we can do that in such a way to make generic curve in R3, which, can, uh, which is three dimension, to be nearly planar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to make uh, I'm going to take basically uh, edge, uh, edges uh, uh, and attach rhombi which are going to be sort of sitting in the middle. So so, so I make uh, my generic curve nearly plane. That's the first step. Is the idea clear? So no. Uh, voice your concern if you uh, don't see it. The, the flip works in 3D, but, but the new vertex is almost in the plane of the initial three or what? Uh, no, not, uh, not in this picture. The way, uh, the way you want to do it is think of, uh, think of a plate being given. I want the new, uh, ver uh, the new vertex to be uh, the new kind of uh, triangle to be, uh, that, that is formed here. To be uh, uh, to be as a sort of go in the middle between these two vertices, and uh, once you go, once you start going to the middle, the height is going to keep reducing and reducing. Eventually, going to get uh, uh, to something which is going to be very very small. Thanks, John. So there is another question in the chat. Uh, Big ask how in doing your your two flips, how do you measure progress toward planar? That's, oh, what that's, that's, what I, uh, that's what I was just explaining. So, uh, uh, so, so suppose uh, in this case, this vertex and that vertex, which for which we're making flip, are at height h1 and h2. Now I'm going to make the point in, uh, to, to be the new point to be very close to the height in between those two. And I keep it, and I keep reducing the height. Okay, good. So, so, um, so that's my uh, that's my first step. My second step is actually very very classical. And uh, uh, so, once uh, once you are in the in, uh, in the nearly planar case, we're gonna we're gonna make my, my curve to be very very compact. So to to uh, to sit inside very small circles. And the way I'm going to do it is by applying uh, this tiny lemma, which even if you forget everything I'm going to say, this is just a beautiful thing uh, uh, that's worth remembering, which I must admit to, um, uh, to my shame. I didn't know until uh, a couple of years ago. So the idea is the following. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, maybe let's go to this picture. So, so suppose this, this plane is, uh, uh, this is some kind of pla planar curve. Then I can say that using these flips, I can put I can put the curve in a, in a circle of bounded radius. That's not exactly obvious. All edges have length one, and uh, so the, so let me read the Steiner's lemma. It's it's stated in in, in the uh, in terms of unit vectors. So suppose you have unit vectors um, uh, u1 up to un. Then there exists the permutation so that the all partial sums. Uh, um, are a distance at most square root of five four from the origin. That's what the Steiner's lemma say. Where uh, uh, I mean, Steiner's just proved there exists a constant, and uh, Bergstrom in 1931 uh, figured out the optimal constant square root of five fourths. Is this clear? The statement clear? Yeah. Um, so and so that's what we do. We start putting, uh, we, we we start applying this uh, uh, flips one by one until eventually we, we we're gonna get to a, a, a very small uh, 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 to to a, a possibly highly self-intersecting or nearly self-intersecting, but a curve which fits this small radius. And now we're gonna do this uh, step three. Uh, the, uh, we're gonna break the, uh, this uni uh, the curve into rhombi and pentagon, 
um, you can sort of see the idea of how we do it here. So, uh, so uh, uh, what? Uh, so we we're gonna just re uh, remove uh, 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 ROM by uh, by uh, one by one until very little is left. In this case, just a triangle is left. In general, what you, uh, what you can uh, be left is uh, uh, tr uh, some kind of tr triangles uh, uh, ROM by or pentagons and. Uh, for pentagons, you get uh, you you need a special ad hoc construction of what to do, and uh, uh, let me not explain that. But the idea is uh, uh, you you find this special point uh, uh, z, which is at equal distance to uh, w1, w3, and w4. There exists a unique such point when pentagons are of a certain type, and uh, you have to do a little bit of case by case analysis but uh, that's roughly the idea so in general we break the curve into smaller curves and uh, once they're broken into tiny curves like pentagon uh, then uh, then you can do an ad hoc construction to uh, uh, to build the dome okay and uh, uh, i see there is a ah that's a good question. So the question is, uh, the question in the chat, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot who asked it. Uh, why do I need this? I need that so that I can find the point Z. So the question is, why do I need step three or step two? Why do I need the curve to be in a very small circle? And the reason is, if all the points are far apart, I cannot break uh, my curve into smaller curves. There's just nothing can be done. The only way you can do it is you can find this point Z, which which uh, which are, are uh, at uh, unit distance from from some uh, points on uh, on your curve, which will allow you to break the curve into smaller part. Okay, that's a good question. Thank you. Everyone clear about this? Yeah, can I move on? Okay, good. So this is this is this was a very vague uh, kind of generic uh, uh, explanation of what to do with uh, generic curves. Excuse me, pun. Uh, uh, and so at the end, as I said, we're going to use a lot of rhombus lemma to actually be uh, make sure that one can implement this idea, and uh, that's a technical step which uh, you need, uh, which is not, uh, 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 which I'm not going to explain. So now let me let me turn to negative result and to uh, and to uh, Federico's question. So the answer is yes. We do know some run by for which uh, which cannot be done. So that that answers uh, Kenyan original question. So here I, uh, before I start reading the theorem, here are a couple of well three examples. Uh, uh, of wrong by which you can which you cannot dome. So the simplest one is this one. If you uh, if 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 you have a rhombus uh, whose both diagonal are one over pi, pi is chosen to be kind of gen uh, gen generic uh, non-algebraic number, then you're good. So as long as uh, you have uh, two, uh, uh, as long as you have some uh, some let's say identical. Uh, a, a small non-algebraic diagonal that dom cannot be uh, that curve cannot be done. Uh, 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 Federico, did I answer your question? Okay, good. So now let me. Uh, these two examples are a little different. Let me tell you where they come from. The first theorem says that uh, uh, suppose uh, suppose we have a rhombus which can't be done. Then there is a, a polynomial with, with of two variables so, uh, 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 with rational coefficients, so that when you substitute squares of those diagonals, it's going to be zero. So if uh, so, if you're in particular, if your uh, if your diagonals are algebraically independent, like this pi and e to the pi, then uh, 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 then this. Uh, 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 then, uh, then you get a contradiction, so that rhombus cannot be done. Is the statement clear? Okay. So the second second theorem is somewhat different, and it's saying that suppose 
uh, one, uh, one diagonal is non-algebraic, but the ratio of diagonals is actually algebraic, then, the, uh, then this uh, rhombus cannot be done. So in this case, uh, one diagonal is uh, uh, e over uh, square root of 17, non-algebraic, and this is uh, uh, same diagonal up to, up to an algebraic number. So that, uh, that rhombus cannot be done. Okay. Uh, can, can, is everyone okay with the statements? I'm, uh, I don't know. Okay, good. Uh, so, um, so now let me, as you can see, there's some, uh, you're gonna get some algebra. Basically, we need, uh, we need to, uh, we, we, I'm going to need to show that there are certain ab algebraic abstractions to building a dome. So, I, and for, uh, in order to give you some idea of what's going on, let me uh, uh, let, uh, let me um, solve an easy special case of this. And um, and for that, I'm going to need uh, a whole bunch of definition. Just bear with me. So, what I'm going to define is some kind of generalization of this picture. Uh, and specific, uh, which, which I'm going to call uh, doubly periodic triangulated surface. And uh, the, uh, the way it's going to work is uh, K is a simplicial two dimensional uh, uh, complex homeomorphic to the plane with, with, with an action of, uh, of Z square, uh, which, which I'm writing as Z plus Z to, to emphasize that there exists, that the action is a free action basically. Uh, uh, by two parallel translations along angle alpha and along angle beta, along vector alpha and along vector beta. Okay, and uh, and I'm gonna say that suppose we have this uh, two-dimensional uh, 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 simplicial complex, which which is doubly periodic. I'm gonna consider the set of gram matrices, which uh, 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 of of these vectors alpha and beta. Uh, now, um, theorem by uh, Guy Fullen Brothers is saying that that actually you can't actually have uh, uh, all uh, all three degrees of freedom. In fact, you only have one degree of freedom uh, when you start flexing this two-dimensional polyhedral surface. And um, um, uh, so, formally, what what they're saying is that if you write a gram matrix. Uh, for uh, for these vectors alpha and beta, then there are two polynomials p and q with integer coefficients which are going to uh, be uh, zero. So so that gives you that removes three degree of freedom down to one. Okay, that that's what the theorem is saying. Uh, everyone clear about the theorem? I know I didn't read the whole thing and it's uh, slightly tedious. Everyone clear? This is a good time. And when I when I ask, I don't mean like a, a generic question. I actually want you to ask a question. Uh, you know, ask me what's going on if you didn't follow. This is not rhetorical. Sorry, sorry. Is the um, is this surface supposed to have unit length edges? Like no, 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 no. It, it doesn't have any any uh, on on a, uh, on, uh, on this basic uh, in this definition. There is no connection to anything I said before. It's just uh, everything is written here. This is just a two-dimensional polyhedral surface. Without any constraints. Okay. So, so I, I could apply an arbitrary linear transformation of R3 after post-composed after theta. To get new alpha beta. Yes. So it's, they're not linear. I mean, uh, uh, up, uh, we're doing this up to rigid motion. Right, but if I post compose theta with a linear map from R3 to R3 that sends alpha and beta to two arbitrary vectors, why can't I get an arbitrary gram matrix? No, no, no. You, uh, you, you uh, this is a geometric object, so you want to preserve the length. It's a it's it's uh, so we're looking at uh, 
uh, we're, we're looking at flexing of these two dimensional surfaces. And uh, so all, all, all my triangles have to go to triangles of the same length. So if you, if you think of this picture, what we, what we can do here is we can, we, we can sort of, uh, we can sort of flex, uh, flex the surface by, uh, by moving uh, triangles around each other, which will, uh, this transformation has to, pre has to preserve double periodicity and has to preserve geometry, local in intrinsic geometry. Okay, so, so K itself has some notion of length built in. Yes. Okay, Correct. I thought it was just an abstract. Uh, thank you. Plus a complex. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, so the pictures on the right are the only pictures that I could come up with uh, by doing extensive Google search of two dimension uh, of uh, double periodic surfaces. None of them, not, none of them apply in this case because they're not homeomorphic to the plane. Uh, uh, this is the only one that I was able to draw that actually fit the description. But in, in principle, you, uh, you, you can do something more complicated and you can replace this triangle with some kind of bubbles which go up and down, up and down, which will, uh, uh, which will be kind of rigid. So everything will be flexing and the bubbles will be rigid. Those are the kind of examples that this theorem is applying to. And, uh, and now what we do, uh, so here is how we can, uh, we can obtain a, a special case of our uh, theorem three. Remember theorem three is a negative result that, you, uh, uh, that we're saying that there exists a non-zero polynomial uh, 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 in the, in the case, uh, for our rhombi. And that's a special case uh, uh, which is obtained in the following way. So suppose we, we do have a dome over rhombus over rhombus gamma. Now I'm gonna uh, have this uh, dome viewed as a bubble on the, uh, for gamma and for minus gamma, it's gonna be kind of negative bubble. And I'm gonna alternate this positive and negative um, uh, bubbles to make a two dimensional polyhedral, uh, doubly periodic polyhedral surface. Now what, uh, uh, what Guy, uh, Guy Fullin's theorem is saying is that it's, uh, um, uh, there is basically a polynomial which relates, uh, there are two degrees of freedom here, one diagonal and another diagonal for the gamma. What Guy Fullen's theorem theory is that those diagonals uh, have an algebraic relation. There is a polynomial uh, uh, which is zero for square, uh, when you substitute squares of the diagonal length. And uh, that's all we need. Uh, in, in the case uh, when my dome is actually homeomorphic to a disk. That's, uh, that, uh, uh, so that's, uh, so it turns out that in this, in this special case, when you consider uh, constrained domes uh, homeomorphic to a disk, uh, solution to the a negative solution to the Kenyan problem is easy. It's easy if, if one knows this case full in theory. Is, uh, is everyone following what I'm saying? Or anyone? Okay, I can see a couple of thumbs up, but really very few. And uh, 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 most likely uh, you're already asleep. Uh, well, <laughs> it's morning in Los Angeles. Uh, so, uh, so I'm gonna uh, proceed a little faster. And uh, so let me remind you what Guy Fullen theorem is saying again. Every two uh, uh, in uh, basically every uh, embedded two dimensional uh, 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 every embedded doubly periodic triangular, uh, triangular surface homomorphic to a plane has at most one uh, doubly periodic flex. And uh, the question is, can one remove the homomorphic to a plane condition? That's a, that's a strong constraint, and it turns out that one cannot. In fact, there exists a double uh, periodic triangular surface whose flex is fully three-dimensional. So, construct, uh, so constructing that requires uh, 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 quite a bit of effort, but basically, uh, basically we're gluing a lot of flexor polyhedra together. And uh, the way to do it is uh, uh, kind of have uh, to, uh, uh, to make it, uh, let me do a picture, to make it somewhat similar to this picture. So we're making uh, a, a bunch of 
polyhedral strings uh, in one direction, bunch of polyhedral strings in another direction, and uh, and in between those strings, uh, the connectors of uh, the connectors in the strings are going to be uh, some flexible polyhedral like brick or doctahedron, uh, and that's good enough for us. So, so the point of this theorem, uh, and by the way, uh, I forgot to say in the beginning, everything I'm saying in this talk is joint uh, work with Alexei Glazeri uh, from Texas. Uh, and um, every, um, so what we're, uh, what we're saying in the theorem is that you cannot, uh, you cannot use uh, Guy Fullen's uh, theorem directly. Uh, you need more, you need more work, okay? The, uh, so just uh, in, 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 in this form, it doesn't apply. So the way, the way we do, the way we actually prove, uh, the way we actually prove our results, um, as in, as this are theorem three and four, uh, 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 as uh, I'll remind you, are negative results, saying that certain rhombis cannot be domed. We use uh, the theory of places. And this is, this is the same theory. If you, you might have seen it if you ever studied the uh, proof of the bellows conjecture that for flexible polyhedra, the volume uh, remains invariant under flexing. So it's the same technology and it's also, it's uh, key technology. Uh, if you'd never uh, heard the word places, it's essentially uh, some kind of valuation. That's how I would uh, say it. And, uh, and in order to give a proof, and Guy Fullen and brothers also using it, everyone's using it. So it's sort of originated in, uh, uh, in, in this form uh, in uh, Connelly Sabito Valve's uh, proof of uh, Sabito's theorem, uh, solution of the Bellows conjecture. And, uh, uh, and it was uh, 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 repeated and refined a whole bunch of times by various people. So what we uh, what we use what we're doing is in the same way as in the proof of the bellows conjecture we're using some kind of uh, inductive topological arguments by saying that yes okay so our surface is complicated uh, for, uh, but we still uh, uh, but it's still constrained because we never use uh, uh, in uh, um, in Guy Fullen's argument the fact that all edge lengths are one so now this is where it's used. So this is specifically argument for the integral curves. So suppose all the uh, all the triangles are equilateral, the, uh, then uh, you have uh, some additional constraints, and turns out that the examples the examples here cannot be built uh, using uh, using equilateral triangles. And uh, I'm not going to say anything about this uh, mm, mm, a proof anymore. Uh, maybe before I move on, are there any questions which I can answer vaguely without, without giving you too much information about the proof? But if there is a vague question, I can give a vague answer. No? How often do you get a chance to ask a vague question? Uh, I'll, I have a vague question. Have you thought about uh, triple periodic surfaces? You found pictures online that were triply periodic, not doubly periodic. Uh, which one? This, this yeah, that one, one. Uh, you, you're right. This one can actually be made triply periodic, which we didn't do. No, the answer is no, we didn't think about that. We were, uh, we, after four years of work on this paper, we were committed to finishing it, not doing, not prolonging it to many more years. So thank you for the vague question. I appreciate it. Uh, so, so now let me uh, let me uh, mention finally a couple of conjectures. Uh, so I mentioned a few conjectures before about integral triangles and uh, closed domes. Um, so he, uh, here is a conjecture that's irritating me to an unimaginable degree. So in fact, I don't know if every planar uh, rhombus can uh, it can be domed or any. Uh, any planar non-trivial rhombus can be done. So, and by non-trivial, I mean say A is non-algebraic. So suppose A is uh, one over pi. I bet this uh, rhombus cannot be done. I cannot prove it. And the reason I cannot prove it is because those two numbers actually are in an algebraic uh, relation. A, uh, the sum of the squares is a very nice number four of those two. You see what I mean? So, uh, uh, so this theorem three cannot be applied 
uh, because uh, you know a square plus b square minus four is four is is a very nice polynomial over there. Uh, and uh, I've tried to uh, uh, spend quite a bit on conjecture for it. We don't know how to do it at all. Conjecture five is sort of inspired by this uh, Steinhaus um, uh, problem. Um, what happens? Uh, uh, can you build this uh, uh, this tube of, uh, of of regular tetrahedra? Uh, and so suppose you have one tri uh, you have two unit triangles in space. Uh, other two unit triangles so that the union of these two curves cannot be done. So there is no tube, you know, not just a tetrahedral tube, any tube uh, uh, which starts at one triangle and another triangle. We don't know that. And uh, fin uh, the a final question is sort of a fun question. We call it cobordism for domes, uh, uh, if, you, if, if you know a bit of a topology. And uh, essentially, we're asking the following question. So suppose we have any integral uh, uh, curve at all. Is the, uh, is the issue of not being able to build a dome over it uh, reduced to one rhombus, or it's a much more global issue? So can, is there a rhombus uh, 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 so that, let's say, uh, attached to two adjacent uh, edges of the curve so that everything else can be done, and now this rhombus cannot be done? Is that an issue? We don't know that. And uh, other questions about these conjectures? Why do you think conjecture six may be true? Uh, wishful thinking. Sorry. <laughs> I, I have we, a, I have uh, a less... because we have, uh, yeah, may, Let me give you a somewhat more serious answer. We basically have a lot of tools to build, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to attach uh, rhombus, uh, rhombi which can be done. And, the, and we tried with conjecture too. The hope was that you can do that and eventually cover everything except for one rhombus. So uh, it just, uh, we just weren't able to do it, but I do believe that conjecture, conjecture six is probably true. Conjecture four, I have no idea. Uh, I think it's, uh, 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 so I, I think it's actually pro probably true, but really we, we don't have a clue. But conjecture six, I felt we were close. Igor? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, do you know conjecture four for like uh, all fractions or rational numbers A or maybe even the algebraic closure of, uh, of Q? Uh, I mean, conjecture four asks if, if uh, the set of domable Rhombi is countable. I don't know how to how to put your question into conjecture four. Yes, uh, is, do you know that planar rhombus with those uh, parameters is countable if a is any number in Q, or maybe even more any number in the algebraic closure of Q? No, I don't know anything about planar rhombi. By uh, I, I I don't I don't know. I cannot prove or disprove. Well, I can. Yeah, but let, let's just assume I know nothing. I, I know a little bit, but next to nothing. So you probably know that if A is zero, then it can be done and that's it. Yeah, well, I know that's a little true. more. I know if, uh, when A is one or something. Uh, yeah. I do know something, but really not that much. Uh, so bef uh, before any more questions, let, um, let me say thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>